not realize that humor is the best uh, way to deal with things. So I kind of went out and said, what is he saying? I mean, that's wrong. And I got really incensed. We were actually not talking for quite a long time, but eventually we made up. He came up and apologized. And that's and nice. After that, we're, we're, we're good. Yeah. Question. Way in the back. Yes, sir, you. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Eklund, I'm wondering if, if you could share, do you have any memories about the night they raided Minsky's, and do you have any memories of working with Jason Robards and, uh, and Bert Lahr? Yes, I remember. <laughs> um, it was directed by William Friedkin, and uh, the then mayor of New York, uh, I can't remember his name. He Lindsay. shot. Lindsay. Was it Lindsay? He shot off uh, Second a part of Second Avenue, so we could shoot all on location, and we had the theater. And um, Bert Lars' dressing room was so appalling that I gave him mine. And um, no, but you know, he was an old man by then. Um, I loved Jason Robards. I loved him, and one night. He invited me home to his magnificent apartment on probably Central Park West and introduced me to his wife, who had just uh, finished for the evening in um, uh, Lauren Bacall. What was she doing then? That famous, famous place she did for a long time. Applause. What? Applause. No, not before. No, that was afterwards. Woman of the Year. Woman of the Year. Woman of the year. Woman of the year. What? Woman of the year? No, 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 no. We are talking 60s. I know, you weren't born then. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and I was, she was very nice to me. I was scared less. And, um, but she was very nice to me. Um, and it was a great experience. And um, I, I, for a long time afterwards, um, Bill Freak, and whenever he came to London, he called me and we would go out and have dinner together. And um, it, it was a fantastic film to do. Except, I was married to Peter Sellers at the time. And the whole film is based on the fact that this Amish girl leaves home and wants to be a dancer. And so the reason I, I discovered striptease is because my dad, standing in the wings, pulls my dress off and the dress slips down so that my boobs show. The sellers forbid me to do that. So um, they had to put in someone else's breasts. <laughs> Don't know who's... <laughs> they were not mine. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a story about Billy Friedkin too. Actually, a bit of trivia. Oh, lovely. Yes. Awesome. My actual first movie debut was in Boys in the Band. Oh, and I'm in the, I think the pre, whatever they call it, before the titles come on, as a model in, in that movie. Ooh. And it's, it's never really mentioned as a credit of mine because it's very short, but that, that's how I started, <laughs> I guess. Oh, you, see how, you see how much we have in common? We, we've not only done yeah. work with the same director, we've done the same one film, but we have also done another film together. Yes. The Hostage Tower. In Paris. Yeah. And, and the, that was after Man with the Golden Gun? Oh, yes. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. And I'm not going to tell you who our co-stars were. Oh, tell us, please. We want all the dirt. Don't we, guys? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you one of them, okay? Oh, okay. Peter Fonda. Yes. Lord Olivia. Billy Dee. Billy Dee, yes. What is she insinuating? I just, I'm just uh, trying to remember who was in it. I can't remember anymore. Right. Who was single then? So that, uh, there were other ones, but you, you know something? Today, we don't even have to sit here. You can just Google everything. That's right. Isn't that scary? Wow. You mentioned another name besides Jason Robots who you loved. Uh, I, I've always been a Bert Law fan. What was he like personally? Jason? No, Bert Law. Oh, Bert Law? Yeah. Um, you know, I was very young, and I'm very old now. Uh, <laughs> uh, he was just a very nice man. He was, um, he was an entertainer. 
was a, you know, like a song. So, so you did like him personally? Oh, I loved him. That's why I gave him my dressing room. I just, you know, I yes, I loved him. I respected him. We had also an English um, comedian in the film. Um, Norman Wisdom. Uh, Norman Wisdom. And uh, you know your stuff. Thank you. I, she's got her Google going right now. Oh yes, I see it right. She's in my phone. Here I'm giving you a compliment to you. But I did know it before I'm I left. You, you so. can't get away from the stuff. I, I, I worked with Norman Wisdom later, and um, you know, it, it, it's a type of, of, of entertainment that does not exist today. You know, it's, it's very hard to beat the internet. It's very hard. Um, live performances. Um, we're not really here, we're virtual. Yeah, we are. We're, we're virtual. It's, you know, it's hard to keep live going because you don't really have to. You can just sit and do this. And you look much better on this than you do on this. <laughs> so I hope it was the opposite. Uh, any other questions? Yes, sir. Raise your hand first. So, Jane Bond, the last few films has taken, you know, it's a new kind of James Bond. So, the first question is do you still watch James Bond movies? And two, follow up is uh, what do you think of the new kind of James Bond uh, character? Good question. Well, I'm not sure who the new one is yet, but I have to say that we have, oh, once you're in the James Bond fold, so to speak, the family of, of people, of this, all these group of people that have been part of the series, you are part of the family. Mm -hmm. And you do get invited to the premieres, you are a close family to the Broccoli's, who is now Barbara Broccoli and Michael Wilson. They still invite us to the premieres, they still invite us to a bunch of events. So you feel very much like you're part of it, but not really though. So you meet all the new bonds and all the new people that are doing them, but you don't necessarily have more, more information than you do on the internet. And I hear that there's going to be a new James Bond, but I know that Daniel Craig is doing the next one. Daniel Craig is currently filming his fifth uh, Bond movie, which will be released in April of 2020. But here's an interesting rumor that I have read recently, I'd like your opinion, both of you. They're talking about the next Bond character being a female. No! <laughs> that, that's my feeling. That ain't gonna happen. Well, they're talking about it. Okay, but my worry is what's going to happen to the Bond girls? Right. Oh. The Bond girls. How about Bond men? Maud, the Bond girls are gone. It's only you and me left because the female in a Bond film are called Bond women, and there should not be a Bond woman playing Jane Janet Bond. <laughs> Because that's not how it was written. Could be written. a bunch of nice looking Bond guys. <laughs> no, James Bond has to be an English, sophisticated, uh, singular, non-married in other words, man of a certain age. Preferably not, well, it would be really hard to get rid of that idea anyway. I mean, anyway, it is, I mean, it is a, a literal, it's a character. It's literature, and it's, uh, I mean, how can you change it? Well, I've, I've heard another interesting rumor that okay. they're uh, considering a black gentleman for the next part character. Wouldn't that be different? Black gentleman? A, a man, yes. But that's not going to work either, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the, and it has nothing to do with, you know... With race? Uh, no, of course not. It has to do with the character is this person, this person that we've seen over what since the 50s, late 50s. Yeah. It's always the same person, different visual aspects or height, but he, ha he has to be a man with this singular I obsession. I, 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 I kind of agree with you. I think the main character should be James Bond, the way he was perceived by Ian Fleming and all. But I also think that I mean, you can always diversify with all the other characters. Of course. There is somebody else or Q is something of else course. more diversified. Great. I think that's a good idea. And we've had black Bond girls. Yeah, of course. Yes. Oh, yes. I recall. And I think, as a matter of fact, when Britain and I worked, this sort of ideal woman at the time was very 
Swedish looking. I mean, they were blonde and they were sort of, but they changed over the yeah. years. And nowadays, most of the blonde girls are exotic looking. They're, yeah. they're dark and they're coming all different colors. And, and I think that's great, you know, so go that direction. But I don't do make it a political state. Please don't. I tend to agree with you. Question. <laughs> Sir. Yeah, uh, an octopus, what was Louis Jordan like? Was he good for a Oh, Louis, lovely man, too. Mm. I've, I've been very lucky, you know, in my career, and I know today when there are a lot of women complaining about, you know, what happened to them as an actor, and I'm sure, I mean, I've run across it, too, but... You are talking but, about uh, me, too! Uh, I'm not, yes, I am, but I was not... <laughs> I've been a very lucky woman. I mean, there's not to say that it's not been confrontations at times, but... I have worked with some beautiful men that have been very respectful and very, very talented, and uh, I'm blessed. I really have been blessed as an actress. Do you think Louis Jordan is one of those perfect gentlemen? I mean, perfect to a T. Uh, not the same gentleman as Roger would be, who would have a rocker sense of humor and always sort of make things fun, whereas uh, Louis Jordan was always the elegant. Yeah, but he was French. Yeah, of course he was. How so? How so in lightness? How no, is he strange? Yeah. No, I, mean, yes. I, like, to, I like the dirt, you know? <laughs> you know, it's really hard for us to sit here and knowing that we are sort of at the end of our road and all these people, wonderful people that we've shared so many fantastic experiences with are gone. And Did uh, either, one of you, uh, either one of you ever consider writing your autobiography? I've been asked, but I've got a really bad memory. I've done one. Oh, you have? Yeah, but it, it ended in 1978, 9. Well, the problem is, too, is that I've been asked to do it as well, but people don't want to hear, you know, the nice stories. Mm -hmm. They want you to tell dirt. They want you to make something controversial, and I'm just not about to do that. I'm not going to make up stories or twist something into something that it really wasn't. I mean, the worst thing you heard from me tonight about Bruce Stern's obsession. That's about it. But that, if you that want was, to that do wasn't it, too bad. I don't want to make it. I don't want to turn my life into a tabloid. Yeah, I understand. Question. <laughs> yes, over here. Yes, and Roger was getting a little older, so they were trying to find somebody that would sort of not look, you know, too uncomfortable with him. And uh, and honestly, they never told me why. Although I do know they were testing uh, James Brolin at the time, and they asked me, and my family asked me, would I do them a favor and come to London and test with him for the part? Because Roger Moore's contract was up, and he hadn't signed. You know, you know, got to know that in the beginning, the guys were not paid a lot, and neither were we, by the way. No. And so I guess he wanted a big race, and they were not about to give it to him, so they sort of tried somebody else. Who, who replaced Roger? Does anybody recall? Timothy Dalton. Actually, yeah. Timothy Dalton, that didn't last long, did it? But in this case... A one-shot deal. Roman would have been the American, first American uh, bomb, but Roger sort of felt the heat, I guess, and uh, they, he re-signed up here for another few movies. And I, lo and behold, got the part, which was not meant to be. That's how it happened. Question. Yes, sir. Well, it's not so much a question. As you point out, the uh, internet is a great source. We don't know if it's true or not, what we read. But in the 70s, believe it or not, according to what I read, John Gavin and uh, someone named uh, Clint Eastwood was supposedly considered for Bond, but they right away closed the door on that, saying he had to be British. I think in the end, people want Bond to be British, or at least speaking with a British accent. Exactly. I mean, we've had uh, uh, an Irishman or a Scotsman. Scotsman? Piers Brosnan. Yeah. Piers is Irish. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Were there any of the names that you, either one of you guys wrote to Australian. me? Australian. Oh, yeah. Um, um, Wh which one was Australian? Laser B. Laser B. Oh, yeah, yeah. That didn't last long either. Were there any other names that you gals have heard that were perhaps considered to be born that, that didn't quite make it? Oh, there's been lots of rumors over the years, but every time there's an end of somebody's contract, we always talk about somebody. 
everybody else's speculations, but who knows what's true or not. Brett, have you heard of any other people being considered for bond? No. Sir? There's a terrific actor out there, and he had a scene in a movie um, where he actually reminded me of Bond. I may not be pronouncing his name correctly. He's a German actor. Michael Fassbender. Oh, he's a great actor. Yeah. He Absolutely. would be a great Bond. He has the Bond the can't be German, for God's sake. You're right. <laughs> a German Bond? So, I don't think I don't pick up the accent. You're a listener. I will shoot you. <laughs> he was great in that scene. He's a great actor, I agree, yes. but he is not British, so and I don't think he could. They wouldn't go with it. Sure. Uh, did, uh, excuse me. Maybe my memory is failing. Did Brett Eklund play uh, opposite George Lazenby as a, uh, a his wife? And uh, uh, in Superboy. That's perfectly correct. Yes. Okay. In a black wig. God knows why. Oh, I'll bet you were gorgeous with a black wig. But you know, Lazenby and I, we both came out of modeling careers. Yeah. And at the time, I was working, I was doing television commercials in Italy called Caruselis. There were like 15 minute segments. And I played myself a twin. And we were sort of like detectives, whatever we were. And every, I would go there twice a year and I would do this for many, many years for L'Oreal hair product. Carousel is they were called. And uh, they always paired me opposite some good looking man. And one year it was George Lazenby. No, really? Oh, that's, that's fabulous. That's before he became Bond, before oh. I became whatever. That's it. Yeah. Yes, question. Last call before we see the movie. Any questions? <laughs> Well, I want you all to join me in a nice round of applause for these two fabulous ladies who are both terrific. Just terrific. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, stay right where you are. Who is showing the movie? Who's got the, uh, who is our engineer? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.